This week is Funhouse Week. Every week is Funhouse Week, Bruce. You're right, you're right, Elise. Okay, but uh, this week particularly, you can head to funhouse.roosterteeth.com because we got a lot of new shows and we're bringing back some that you may have missed. Uh, there's a sketch show that Elise was the showrunner on. Well, a co-showrunner. You called, know, uh, I... who cares? Called Arizona <laughs> Circle. It's making its triumphant debut this week. Yeah, a lot of cucks in that and you'll understand why when you see it. Um, <laughs> and Funhouse Theater Mode is back for a second season. Oh, yes, finally. Yeah, so you can click the link in the description below and follow us on Twitter at Funhouse Team to get the full programming schedule of all of our shows and events. Funhouse Week. It's happening. No one can stop it. <laughs> Hey, you probably noticed something different about this week's open house. We got haircuts. Bruce got a haircut. I didn't good, get a haircut, Thank but it's longer, which is different. Thank you. And Lawrence? I got new glasses. New glasses from Lawrence? I mean, it's Lawrence. the same pair of frames, but it's it's new. Oh, you did? They're real nice. Yeah, they're not yeah, scratched they're up or scuffed nice. up anymore. I was thinking about what's been missing from open house for a couple months, and it's that it hasn't disrupted enough people in its shooting. This is what our subreddit's been asking for. They yeah. want more of the background people it, up here, you call up them front. That. You can't call them I'm that. Just, that's just what they said. I'm reading off the subreddit. You have to call them the less thans. Oh, jeez. That it's way not, it doesn't not, imply position. Like How are you doing? Um, I, got, I got a lot of work to do. <laughs> How's that oh, gold? We're disturbing him. We're disturbing <laughs> him. Tell him a gold. This is what you wanted. <laughs> <laughs> More done on camera. He didn't point it at himself. <laughs> There's Don. <laughs> there setting up the Omar camp as we speak in fact. Oh, look at that. We're gonna give this setup a, a try for a little while, see see how we like it. And also, this setup would not be possible if it wasn't for Mac Weldon. That's true. They're better than whatever you're wearing r right now, unless they're Mac Weldon's. And this setup is better than whatever you might have been watching otherwise. That's true. I would agree. Whatever trash mm -hmm. can you're sitting on watching this video. <laughs> yeah. They're not homeless. Are you sure? <laughs> <laughs> they have the internet. <laughs> homeless people have the internet. Yeah, it's called a library. They do. Yeah. They have cell phones now. They're crazy. How do you think homeless people masturbate, Bruce? What do you mean? They use their imagination. <laughs> <laughs> hey, your first question this week comes from Dap Dude. My mom says I need to take up a new hobby. What hobby should I be starting so she gets off my back? So you have to think about stuff that your mom likes. Number one, sewing. Uh, I was gonna say banging your dad, but sewing, <laughs> right? Sewing her wild oats uh, with her father. Um, so I think maybe you should consider having sex with your father. And maybe sewing a quilt. And sewing a quilt. Yes. That the two of you can canoodle beneath. <laughs> Wait, your <laughs> mom daddy. and you? Ew, no, right. no, you can't, no. With your dad. Oh, oh okay, all right. Your mom doesn't bone herself. This is disgusting. You can't get pregnant unless you're a woman. Even then it's tough. Your mom also likes masturbating. So, what? <laughs> you're saying in the camera. Tell the, oh, tell the person who asked the question. Likes masturbating. <laughs> uh, so then, Actually, hold on, Bruce. Yeah, yeah. Bring your mom into the room for this one. <laughs> this is something you can share. <laughs> Go get her. We'll wait. So then, what you should do is you should also masturbate. But then make sure you guys are in separate rooms with thin walls. So then that way you can uh, after afterwards after everybody's done and had their had their fill. Uh, then you guys can kind of like come together. That's not what I mean to say. <laughs> it sounds like you already did. <laughs> that's not what I mean to say. And then talk about your experiences. Oh, that's nice. There you, go. You, you can relate to each other with your hobbies. I'm going to take the other side of that coin. Sexual appetites, birth. That's neglecting one thing that all women share in common and that us men and sons could bear to empathize with a little more and that's periods. Mm. So I yes. say, from now on, store up your shits like once a week and it's gonna blow everything out. There's gonna be a lot of blood. Oh, so you want us to hold it in so we never poop? I mean, once a week, you want that one bomb to drop. That's basically like giving birth mm. and like menstruating because you'll be bleeding too. So <laughs> once, you, uh, once you destroy the bathroom, then you can go to your mom and say, mom, I need my butthole sewn up and now I understand what it was like when you gave birth to me. That's right, and she sews really well. I need you to make a quilt <laughs> out of my taint. <laughs> What do you mean we're demonetized? Well, I'm throwing the whole thing off its axis. Get into planking. It'll be popular forever. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Wait. Wait, the exercise or the meme? Or both? How are they different? How does it get you good closer point. to your identical. mom? Huh. What? I mean, I guess. We did kind of veer away from the original question by a large margin. I did not. I said yeah. masturbate together, but. Yeah. You said I sewing. Said, I said bang your dad. <laughs> next question. Uh, the next question from Roughwork. I drive a semi-truck for a living. 
what can I do to make my work day more fun? The, the problem is when you're driving a semi truck, it's typically down a straight road. Mm -hmm. That's easy. So you just put a boot or put a like, club on the wheel, All right. go into the back of the truck where you got yourself a little go-kart track. Oh, and then you can be buzzing around in the back. In the back idea. of the truck. Well, that's the a club's doing all the work for you. You can get used to all those turns and slamming the gas. That'd be awesome. Just that. Just yeah, that. it'd be awesome. <laughs> also, <laughs> go-karts don't go backwards, so. Filling with carbon monoxide. <laughs> <laughs> well, you pass out and you wake up where you intend yeah. to go, which what is a fun life you had. That's yeah, right. I was say, I like the idea of the accident and the aftermath, <laughs> and then like the police officers open it. It's a go-kart track. There's you crumpled in a go-kart <laughs> filled with fumes. They go, we have no idea how this happened. <laughs> <laughs> At least he died having fun. <laughs> he died doing what he loved. Uh, I know semi truck drivers are known for picking up hitchhikers. Mm, true. So I say you pick up as many hitchhikers as you can and then you quit your job as a semi truck driver and you get a little band going because everyone knows hitchhikers no folk music that's true they do that's how bob dylan was found by uh, emi this, this sounds like you're gonna get pulled over by the immigration service <laughs> <laughs> a bunch of people in the back no. of your truck <laughs> especially if you're working musicians. in the yeah. like polish accordion music i think you know it gets bored out there i think that's kind of the common theme here is that it gets bored on the road so uh so maybe what you want to do is you want to spice it up mm -hmm. treat driving more like a game maybe see how close you can get to the car in front of you without actually touching them that's a great idea stuff like that maybe stop see how quickly you can stop without actually causing an accident treat driving that uh what ten thousand pound death machine like like a toy you know <laughs> that's what you want most people do i can't believe we've, nobody's thought of this yet you play video games. You play video games while driving. That'll make it way more fun. It's so easy. Mm -hmm. You plug it into a little, just a little 12 inch monitor there on your, on your Why TV. Why would you use a 12 inch? Just, though you have such big windshields, yeah. you might as well just, just get a whole TV screen. You get a flat there. screen. You put flat screen. Yeah, you get yourself a plasma. You, you, get a, you get yourself a plasma TV, you put it in the passenger seat. You could download American Truck Driving Simulator, start it at the exact place you start your route, yep. and then if you're playing the game and it controls the truck too, <laughs> You are gonna feel like you're playing a game for 12 hours or whatever your so drive efficient. is, so as efficient. opposed to driving your job. That's it's a easy. great idea. Next question from Kongu Straggler: With Indiana Jones 5 coming out what? in the near, f Indiana Jones 5 is coming out in the near future. Yeah, bud. Check your IMDb pages. What legendary artifact do you send old Indy around the world to track down? The legendary person who actually enjoyed Kingdom of the Crystal Skull. <laughs> Ooh. There's only one of them. Yeah. yeah. They can't go all the way to Montana. <laughs> <laughs> all the way in the back of the cave. You gotta solve all these traps. It's really just piles of ramen boxes and discarded curtains. I think part of the reason people didn't like Crystal Skull, except for that one guy, <laughs> was that it didn't seem believable that such an old Indiana Jones could do such young things. Mm. So they should have him do old things. Like, um, he's in search of <laughs> tennis balls that'll go on the bottom of his walker. Ooh, those are hard to find. Yeah, you know? yeah, cut them and everything. Yeah, or he's in search of some way to blow his entire savings because some person randomly called him on the phone. Or he's in search of a way to be not incontinent so he's not pissing his diaper. Exactly. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> Indiana so Jones and the adult diapers. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. He's got a lot of adult wow. diapers. That's, That's pretty. In sad. search of uh, a grandson that can help him turn on a sound bar. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> also, what is a sound bar? <laughs> <laughs> well, I think we actually just pull Indiana Jones into the modern era, mm -hmm. and he goes on the search for the black sarcophagus. And the problem we all know with the last movie was Shia LaBeouf wasn't young enough. Yeah. People wanted younger. I guess. Or in it enough. It's the same character, but even younger. He's got fidget spinners, and then he drinks the red stuff out of the sarcophagus, and then he dies of something. <laughs> Sepsis. <laughs> Wet Dumpling writes in, who should the new Papa John be? Oh, that's right, he got deposed. <laughs> He's yeah. still fighting, it's like, a, it's a civil war for Papa John's. That's not really a civil war, because it's him versus everybody else. <laughs> yeah, I know, but they found out that he has some sort of legal Stand, he's trying to use private companies to buy up shares so that way he has a majority. I love it. Man, Papa John never gives up. I think we just use our own John Smith. We got enough Johns here. Come over here and uh, why don't you say what Papa John would first say as the like his first act as the CEO of Papa John's. Go, go right ahead. Free pizzas for me! Lifetime! <laughs> well, at least it wasn't racist. <laughs> I guess so, yeah, let's just step forward. Okay, that one didn't work. What about John Holland? Yeah. Oh yeah, we need John Holland. John, you're, you're new Papa John. The first thing that you do as the new Papa John Holland. Put Viagra in my pizza. Oh, so yeah. then my pizza is the first sexually stimulating pizza, the only one. Sex sells. I love it. Uh, and free also, not racist. Thank you, John. Very good. Okay, First yeah. not racist thing John Holland's ever said. He'll, he'll last the whole week. <laughs> uh, I'm going to go in a different direction. 
Papa Don. Oh, Don. We need Papa Don. Don. <laughs> and I want to hear exactly what Papa Don's going to say once he takes the reins. All right. I would immediately attempt to divide whichever city we are delivering in, okay? <laughs> we would only make deliveries what? to north section of town. <laughs> Some kind no of delivery parallel. south of the location. It's called gerrymandering, Don. You can't do that. What do you it's mean? It's perfectly legal. <laughs> wow. Well, that, he got fired real quick. Now I need, uh, I've decided to throw Papa John out and get yeah. Papa Jacob. Okay. Okay. Over here. All right, Jacob. we're getting further and further away Jacob, from here. John. Come on, Jacob, get, get over here. You run pizza now. What's the first thing you do is Papa Jacob? Um, no pepperonis allowed. We Fire only him. have pazookis here. No, that's, BJ, that's yeah. BJ's. But. He's, he's going to get sued. <laughs> no, that's pizza cookies. They put trademarks after that, that's specifically trade. because it's theirs. We went bankrupt. <laughs> All right, okay. <laughs> we barely have any money to pay our CEOs anymore. Let's hear what Popo... Popo Bomar. <laughs> Popo Bomar. Yeah, you're, the new, the you're the new CEO of Papa John's. We, we only know. sell pazookis right now. We got to get us out of that. We currently only sell pazookis to the south side of town, and we don't have pepperonis. Nope. And they're cup filled in Viagra. Yep. Stock is plummeting. What do you do as the new CEO? Pizza is not just for white people. That was racist. <laughs> <laughs> that, we're back to being racist He's been again. Out. He's out. <laughs> He's been kicked out. <laughs> Papa John is back. Yeah. Papa <laughs> John's back in. He doesn't look so bad now, does he? Yeah, that was his <laughs> plan all. <laughs> Frosty Lickens says, uh, since Game of Thrones isn't coming back until next year, what fantasy world should people get invested in before then? Is this the Game of Thrones question of the week? Yeah, as long as we get to play that music, I love yeah, that music. Yeah, it's a good song. I don't even know if it's in our music library anymore. We're using it illegally, I think. So, what was the question? What fantasy world? Yeah, yeah. yeah. because what, everyone's it was hot in Game of Thrones. What's the new one? So this is a bit of a, an old cut. Hasn't been popular since the 80s, but I say the mall. Like the, the place, Just the mall? Just like the yeah. location, the mall? Yeah, you never know what's going on there. All is right. Tiffany dating Amber now? Is Amber dating Tiffany? There's a special at the Orange Julius, but that's where all the cool kids hang out. Are you yeah. ready to graduate up into that? Who knows? And then the mages, they're hanging out at Hot Topic. It's not really a fantasy, it's more reality. I think Lawrence is onto something, but I think he could go even further. Okay. Mm. What is it about the mall that makes people think it's so cool? Hot dog on a stick. Arcade? Close, yeah. <laughs> It's because it's, it's it makes you think of the 80s, right? All right. <laughs> he knows yeah. where he's going with it. Okay, the best right. fantasy world I can think of, Future Spa. That's what the fans want. Future Spa. Yeah. It's sexy. It's cool. It's got action. It's got everything that Game of Thrones does, does and more. Is that when you crawl in the, the Ziploc bag and they shoot you with water? Is that that place? What? No, Future Spa, the pinball machine. <laughs> oh. <laughs> What's the bag one? Um, I'm going to say the rich world of George, the George Lucas Spectacular, Willow. What was the name of that fantasy world, though? Willandia. Willandia. Do you actually know? Hold on, let me get Dan. Dan probably knows. Dan, we have an important question. What's the name of the world that Willow takes place in? Oh, it's the world. The world? No, no, that can't be right. They yeah. took W and really the B, and the it's the world. world? It can't, that can't be real. B-W-O-R-L. I think, Welcome I think to the world! I think that's true. I think he's right. The broad bland of blandacy. We'll send that answer off to the lab and we'll it's get like back to you. They did coke all day. Uh, Bruce, you want to read us the last question? From Sneaky Two Ball. I just moved to the USA from a Southeast Asian country. What's the best way to adjust to American culture and prevent culture shock? Start by forgetting everything you know and then do nothing else. Just don't know anything. And then you're a pretty awesome American. They gotta know something. Why? They're coming from Southeast Asia. It's right, pretty yeah. similar. Yeah. This is a melting pot. You want to feel at home? Go to Panda Express. Don't like it? Go to Pickup Sticks. Is that bad? What's the other place you go to? Payway. They go to Payway. <laughs> uh, <laughs> <laughs> or if you don't like any of that, just go to Chipotle. Because then you eat Mexican food. You never, you probably never had Mexican food in a Southeast Asian country. Am I right? Who are you looking at? <laughs> See here. <laughs> anyway, um, welcome home. Yeah. First thing you got to give up is your uh, your second language or more. You have you can only speak one language here. That's a rule. Absolutely, yeah, that's true. Bit of a stereotype. Asian cultures tend to respect their elders, care for them in the home. Mm. They do. Throw that in the trash, and by yeah. that I mean your elders. Yep. Dump them as fast as you possibly yeah. can. Yeah. That's the American Throw way. them in a home or just kill them. Either way. I yeah, mean, one's as good as the other, really. It's such a problem here. Cops have bumper stickers telling us to stop it. Yeah, and we don't. It's part of American culture, like The Purge. Part of the American culture. It's a hey, movie. It's I how don't... we fixed uh, <laughs> poor people or whatever. 
What? What country does he live in? I that's, don't know. That's what the purge is about, just killing poor people. I thought it was about giving people a no, day to not. indulge their base fantasies so yeah. they would be civilized yeah, the rest that's of the rest of That's the selling point, but in reality, they're trying to kill the sick but and the poor. In the first one, Ethan Hawke is not poor, but they try and kill him. Because a poor guy breaks into his house. Oh, because Adam's he, was, something. he was saving the poor. Adam thinks it's, they're, the movie's about killing poor people? Well, I mean, I, it checks out. You just have to dress it up a little. Hey, speaking of dressing it up a little, start with your underwear. <laughs> This episode of Open House is brought to you by Mack Weldon. Mack Weldon is better than whatever you're wearing right now. Mack Weldon believes in smart design, premium fabrics, and simple shopping. A couple clicks on their website, and you will be sitting pretty in the most comfortable underwear, socks, shirts, undershirts, hoodies, and sweatpants that you'll ever wear. Mack Weldon also has a silver line of underwear and shirts that are naturally antimicrobial, which means even if you stink, these won't. They want you to be comfortable, so if you don't like your first pair, you can keep it, and they will still refund you, no questions asked. Not only does Mack Weldon's underwear, socks, and shirts look good, they perform well too. They're perfect for the gym, going to work, out on a date, or just everyday life. So go to MacWeldon.com and get 20% off using promo code HOUSE, H-A-U-S. Do yourself a favor, because Mack Weldon is better than whatever you're wearing right now. Ah, the purge is happening. All right, who's ready to go purging? I got my weird mask. I was gonna put mine at the bottom of Mariana's trench, oh, so only James Cameron. Only James Cameron could see it. <laughs> and he's like, "I found it. The fuck is this? <laughs> Time to make Avatar." <laughs> then he calls Catherine Bigelow. Goes, "You're a bitch." <laughs> Coming away. <laughs> I want to hear what Matt, Matt Peake thinks for our, our start.